Good morning guys, today I'm sitting in a Vauxhall Grandland X 1.2 engine, I think it's turbocharged 3 cylinder engine and this one came for timing belt replacement, better said wet timing belt replacement, what does that mean? The timing belt is running in engine oil, which is not really typical, they just started to doing it recently, the manufacturers started to doing it recently because before usually had either like a dry timing belt which was running not in engine oil or the timing chain which was running in engine oil so now what are the issues with the wet timing belt or what difficulties you may face or a problem you may face as you know the timing belt is made from rubber or some kind of rubbery material and the engine oil and the rubber are not the two best friends let's say for example if you have leaking oil from your engine from somewhere and it gets on the engine mounts it damages the rubber there if it gets on the cv boot damages the cv boot and also like I'm, i don't know the factory oil change interval on these ones but i guess it's like a long life oil change interval maybe 20,000 miles 15,000 miles who knows definitely not 6,000 miles the recommended one i guess so imagine that the oil degrades over time thus damaging the the timing belt the wet belt and it can cause a lot of issues lot of problems for you for example as just this one i think i need to double check but i think we we messaged like we were messaging with the owner and he said he already had the low oil pressure issue on this one which is very common because chunks or pieces from the wet belt just like broke off and blocks the oil strainer <coughs> On the oil pump and it causes a whole lot of mess so yeah um, unfortunately which is a really shame this car is a 19 plate and only has 44,000 miles on the clock which I would say it is quite early like it is very uh, too soon to you should change the timing belt usually it, it lasts a lot longer than than this but unfortunately this is the case with the wet belts or the wet belt system so now stay tuned if you want to see or you want me to give you some tips tricks insights how you do it and um, general wisdom maybe or knowledge another story i've been to the to Vauxhall asked them for for the, the kit of the timing belt they only provide a kit with the timing belt and the tensioner and an idler including for around 200 pounds and I will show you what kit the owner got for this one and how much he paid for it and what it includes also I'll show you the time the locking tools for the timing belt for the camshafts and the crankshaft and how to use it and also I'll show you how to check if your timing belt already needs a replacement so yet yeah, without further ado let me show you around the tools uh, timing belt kit what we are going to use today and then let me show you after how I'm changing the wet belt on this Vauxhall Grandland X 1.2 which the same engine can be found in PSA models or PSA engines because this is a PSA engine 1.2 PureTech there may be a slight differences which I'll cover and yep so without further ado let me get the job done okay so here is or here are the tools and here are the parts for the timing belt job so let me talk about the tools first you've got four tools in the set I got the Nielsen CT5938 set if you need it or if you want to get the same you can get any like a Chinese knockoff copy of the same tool it will do the same job so basically this one the long one crankshaft locking tool two camshaft locking tools I'm not sure which is which I mean one intake camshaft locking tool one exhaust camshaft or vice versa i'm not 100 percent sure and this other tool which i want to show you is a measuring tool measures if the timing belt needs replacement i'll show you how to do it or what how to use it it basically measures the thickness of the of the wet belt and it tells you if it needs replacement exceeded that thickness level or not so let me show you how to do it basically this is the new belt and the timing belt should fit into that uh, those two nipples between those two as you can see 
sorry as you can see the new one fits perfectly you can do the same on the car which i'll show you in the minute because it's it should be used on the car on the old belt and it tells if it if it fits between the two those two nipples or not so basically you remove the oil filler cap place that tool on the timing belt and if it goes on it it's okay if it doesn't then it needs a replacement so now let me show you the kit basically as i said i've been to Vauxhall and they said they sell only the kit with the tensioner idler and the timing belt for around 220 pounds this kit was i think a bit more i think was 280 but he has the timing belt valve cover <laughs> which in Vauxhall they told me that they don't replace it weird or interesting it has the ribbed belt or auxiliary belt I'm not 100% sure if that's the whole belt or it's, if that's just for the water pump I'm not sure then it has the gasket for the water pump crankshaft seal hardware for the job another like little gasket which goes uh, underneath that timing timing uh, window or like timing belt window which i show you where that is and different bolts and oil drain plug and washer and bolts crankshaft bolt i think those are the valve cover bolts and also an idler i think this is the idler and this is the tensioner or vice versa and also contains oil filter and oil for the engine um, but now I've told you all this and let me start working on the car and show you what to do or what to remove so here is how to check if you need to change the wet belt on the 1.2 engines either it's in Vauxhall, Peugeot or Citroen the 1.2 PureTech so basically first of all you need to remove the that engine cover that one by the way, I just got a delivery of tools, another 500 pound spend. So, remove the engine cover, engine oil filler cap, and now use the tool. And I don't know how much you will be able to see, but basically there is the timing belt there. And you should be able to fit this one in between. And by the feel, or by the feel of it, I put on the other side and it doesn't go over on this one but I will show you that once I got the belt off of the um, sprockets okay what I have done so far I disconnected a couple of hoses pipes so basically this one two 10 millimeter bolts um, which is one was here uh, there I always put back the bolts where they are from so that I won't, don't forget where to put them or where they were from so two 10 millimeter bolts one here one there undone it clip on the end pull the clip and I just pull off the pipe again this pipe again two 10 millimeter bolts one here one here one here put back the bolts from the turbo this end just slides off pulled it then this line I guess that's a PCV line how I undone it you see like a tab on the end so just push together this one and pull it connect on this end uh, which is here pull that little tab push it down pull the connector removed the ignition coils basically uh, here is the connector of it it's like it's pushed in so basically you need to pull this tab and then lift off from here with a pick tool just so and push off the connector also it was held by bolts they go here eight millimeter bolts as you can see so now what i'm going to do i'm going to disconnect this fuel line pinch these tabs together and push it off be careful fuel may squirt from it or spill and then i just have a couple of bolts for the valve cover eight millimeter around the perimeter and i can remove the valve cover once i'm done done with that i'm going for the drive belt uh, that's the tensioner i don't know what size nut that is a bolt it is i'll find it out but i need to um, remove the tension from it and remove the drive belt obviously make a note of the orientation or how it goes on the pulleys 
remove that and then I'll carry on with the crankshaft uh, pull removal but I will update you very soon okay valve cover removed as it was the camshaft that camshaft is locked this camshaft is locked from here so basically you need to remove the vacuum pump for you to be able to remove the vacuum pump first you need to undo few like air lines or air pipes from here undo them and then you need to disconnect one water pipe which i just hanged up here basically you pull the retainer screw or spring all the way up remove it and then push back and forth back and forth and remove it and and remove it that way because it may be stuck on as it was my case then the vacuum pump is held by three bolts one two three i just reused the same bolts for the locking tool for the camshaft so that's aligned again i show you this, this one aligned and there is one more which goes to the crankshaft or to the uh, flywheel locks the flywheel in place so basically i removed the crankshaft pulley six 30 millimeter bolts i removed them and the tool is uh, put back uh, put into the flywheel let me try to show you so it's pointing that way there is a hole in there in the transmission and then you just look at the flywheel that way you need to wiggle it with a little bit so back and forth back and forth not with the tool but with the you need to rotate the crankshaft back and forth back and forth and then you can slide that tool in the locking pin and you lock the camshaft in uh, crankshaft in sorry and now what you're gonna do <laughs> now with an 18 millimeter bolt you can remove the crankshaft bolt uh, sorry with the 18 millimeter socket you can remove the crankshaft bolt and you can then if you see here there is that plastic window it's held by four bolts if you can see so remove i guess there are 10 millimeter bolts so you need to remove them four bolts and you will have access to the idler and the tensioner so first remove the 18 millimeter bolt for the crankshaft gear or pulley and then you can remove the crankshaft pulley itself and then you can undo the four bolts remove that window uh, plastic window or see-through glass or see-through window whatever that is called I, i'm not sure and then you can remove the idlers or sorry the idler and the tensioner so let me do that okay as you can see that see-through plastic is removed 10 millimeter bolts removed idler tensioner removed Further two 10 millimeter bolts, uh, sprocket, crankshaft sprocket or gear removed. I just put back the two bolt to the crankshaft pulley and just pulled on it and removed it. It was fairly simple. And now let me show you how to remove the belt. Now you basically can slide or remove the belt from the uh, gears and then just slide it like around somewhere here I will need both of my hands so basically you can pull it on it slide it around here and pull it out from the middle once you remove the old belt you can fit back the new one so again go from the middle and as you can see I removed these plastic caps because these edges or ends were sticking out on the other side and I couldn't remove the belt and put back the new one so basically remove them too feed them feed the belt in the middle put them down put it down push it down all the way you can and then just pull pull on the sides towards the side of the engine that's it and then from underneath you'll see it's there what you need to do you need to remove the crankshaft seal and change the seal but first remove it only and then put back that big uh, crankshaft pulley tighten it with the bolt and then you can replace the new uh, new seal